This is a bonus episode of Basic AF Tom Anderson, Jeff Battersby. Tom. Back again on a little Here shorter we are. schedule. Here we are yeah, again. Yeah, well, our very first bonus episode with for very good reason. We've got uh, Greg Battersby back, my brother, who uh, he told us in our last real episode, not bonus, uh, about his trip from Seal Beach to uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. And we figured it only right to uh, talk about the the better planned trip, certainly, but uh, maybe some of the foibles that came with that. Greg, welcome. Good to be back. And yeah, I have been. I've been. I've been back for a couple of days. Just <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> you, the can, Conestoga wagons holding up okay. <laughs> you got, oxen, the oxen are uh, being watered right now. Feel feel like you. You're playing a game of Oregon Trail. <laughs> you have diphtheria, so <laughs> you die. Anyway, we wanted to uh, we wanted to catch up with you uh, and hear a little bit about the return trip um, and have you give us those details. So it's going to make this a, a quick, short, sweet bonus episode. But uh, give us the deets. Tell us what happened when you left, what where you went, what you planned out, and how that worked out. Yeah, so uh, made the trip back on uh, Saturday of last week. Uh, better planned, more educated from my trip up. Um, so instead of taking the 101, which is typically a little longer, and I gave you the reasons why I chose that route on the way up, <clears throat> I took the faster and more direct uh, Highway 5 uh, uh, route down to Southern California. I also, one of the things I learned, of course, was that... Um, I need to drive in eco mode. So that's fair. Uh, I did that. I also charged to 100% before leaving, um, which was possible because there's a charger at uh, at my mom's house. So I just took advantage of that. Um, so my experience was better. Um, instead of it taking 13 hours, it took 11. <laughs> I, left, I left at 2 p.m. and I got home at 1 a.m. almost exactly. Um, and some of that was due to uh, waiting at the charging uh, location. So, um, as you know, you know most OEMs like Subaru don't have their own charging network. So, uh, I am subject to the availability and speed of public charging. Um, and I typically go with Electrify America, but um, had to had to use some other chargers because those weren't available. Uh, and again, we talked about. You know, routing to the vehicle or to the charging locations. Uh, I used the Subaru app for that. Um, hey Subaru, and um, you know, in some cases, it routed me backwards to an Electrify America. Of course, that wasn't an option. So, and there were, uh, you know, just so people know, you know, when you're using a public charging uh, provider, there's wait in some cases. Uh, the worst case was I had to wait an hour. Um, you know, cause people were charging, there were, I think three, uh, cables, three dispensers available. So I waited about an hour, got up there and then had difficulty getting the charger to work. So, uh, we also talked about charging culture and, you know, the people that are there, everybody's really cool. We're, we're kind of all experiencing the same thing for the first time. And had <laughs> Misery somebody loves company, I guess. Paid, <laughs> yeah. Somebody had, somebody paid for my charging session. Why was that? What, what happened? Well, there's incentive for them, right? Because it, they can't charge until I get out of the way. So, <laughs> so I'm waiting and I'm having trouble with the, the dispenser. And uh, this nice lady came up and tried her phone and it worked. And uh, so then I just Venn motor. And then there was a person next to me uh, after my session was underway who had similar problems. So I paid it forward and, and took care of her. I don't know that she paid me back. I think I took on the chin on that one. That was at the uh, same place? Same place. It was a charge point uh, okay. location. So your phone started to work eventually, or your app, I should say. Yeah, I guess so. Whatever the reason was, you know, they're quirky, okay. and I wasn't able to to pay for it on my own, but I was able to pay for this other person's at some point. Uh, so, yeah, and I think really the limitations for me with this vehicle are the range, obviously, the 73 kilowatt hour battery, um, and the um, speed at which... It charges. So each each time I stop to charge, I'm looking at an hour, and that's to get it to 80%. You know, I typically get down around 20% uh, 
uh, before I stop to charge. I, I don't want to go any further than that because I don't want to get stuck. Um, and yeah, it's been pretty consistently an hour to go from 20 to 80. So yeah, uh, cut off two hours with my plan, you know, the, the different route and, uh, driving in eco mode, driving very slowly. I was driving. When you I say very driving, slowly, like it, what is 55. it? It's 75 on 55. You went the whole way down. I drove at 55 miles per hour wherever possible. Holy smoke. So wait, yeah. isn't, isn't I five, isn't that 75 miles an hour? Can't it's you go 65 65 in, in most okay. places, some places you can go 75, but I, my main Jeez. concern was just battery, you know, duration. Sure. Uh, I was trying to get as many miles out of it as I could. And, uh, so I had to stop, uh, I think it was three times versus the four that I stopped on the way up. Um, Which you started at eighty percent when you left Seal Beach, yeah. rather than a hundred percent. So that that gives you a little, a little bit more. Um, and just for as an aside, and I we didn't ask this the last time. How much does it cost? Uh, how much does it cost to charge each time? Like, what's it costing uh, you? Yeah, usually it's. Uh, I mean, just to tell you what I'm spending on average, it's like twelve to fifteen bucks, eighteen bucks at the most. Um, okay. It's a it, it, and it depends. Like the cost per kilowatt hour varies depending on when you charge. There's peak and off peak charges, and I think um, I don't recall exactly what the what the kilowatt hour price so is. So the the one a.m. charges are fine. The, the those times <laughs> that you're sitting at the place at one in the morning. That's, that's a good reason. You're saving Save 15 some money. cents. You're saving like 15 <laughs> cents. It's totally worth oh boy. it. <laughs> so oh, you're paying, man. say, 15 bucks a charge. And what were, what would be like the average mileage you would get in between? Uh, I think at 80%, it, it's about 180 miles on paper or on the, um, on the display. What I actually get, I haven't really drilled down and done the math on that, but I think you know that 180 miles is to zero percent, right? And I'm right. only get, I'm getting down to 20 percent, so I'm probably getting like 150 miles, something like that. And and it's like yeah, a 400 mile journey. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. So if it's 15 bucks, say a charge up, and uh, we were talking before we started to record about the cross track, which is what I have, um, and I can get four four fifty a tank on the highway with that, and Virginia gas is less expensive than California gas. So my fill up would be yeah, by half. 36 bucks. Uh, so yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. 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 California gas is about five and change a gallon, but yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. I don't know I'm, how dig- you guys I'm do. digging the, uh, I'm digging the savings, but so I'm, you know, I'm back with Subaru discussing uh, what we're going to do. I may end up keeping this vehicle and that's just going to limit my, uh, my distance travel. Yeah, and like, and I can't remember if we talked about this too much in the, the first uh, recording we did, but like your daily driving and, and commute and everything to work, you like the car then. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just that really that range and even not, if the range sounds like you would almost be able to tolerate that if the charging was maybe a quarter of a time of the time that it takes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, sitting there for an hour each time, and, and if you add weight to that, it could be two hours. And then if you have to do that two, three times a trip. Brutal. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> that, that's it. It's it's the, the speed of charging, mm-hmm. size of the battery to some degree, and, um, yeah, just adds a ton of time to your trip. Well, all right. Well, I'm happy that you cut the time off the trip. I'm sorry that you had to wait <laughs> At the base of the grapevine for, it was that the one, I think that was the one where you had the hour wait it, just because uh, you couldn't get your app to work and the person behind you wanted to uh, go. But yeah, that was the um, base of time. Yeah. And we really appreciate you coming back for this uh, this uh, little update. It's uh, it's pretty good. I've, I've actually heard from a bunch of people already about, you know, about the last episode of the podcast that uh, they're... Uh, they were really interested in it. You know, there's a thing that's on a lot of people's minds, and I don't think it's a thing that's played up that much uh, when it comes to electric cars. And yeah, guaranteed that, the, or granted that this the Subaru has a, a slower charge time, but you you know, you still got limitations with other vehicles too. It's not like you're you're pumping gas and you're gone in 15, 20 minutes, yeah. which is what we said in the last episode. Yeah. It sounds like the Tesla is the king of that, right? The, the fastest charging. 
I think fastest so. Fastest charging. It's some of them. Some vehicles are starting to get longer range than Tesla now. Some of the, but I think they're pretty beefy vehicle price too. Like in the, yeah, and then it gets into how many motors you want and, and right. all the other extras. Right? Do you want the dual, the triple, the Cybertruck, whatever? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not driving a Cybertruck. That thing looks. As I said, that that Solterra is a great vehicle if you live in the mountains, right? If if you if you don't have to drive a long ways. From what I hear, and I guess I shouldn't say it's a great vehicle because I haven't used it in this capacity yet, but um, it, it's supposed to be very good in in the snow uh, with the dual motors and the elevated. Uh, it, it's lifted a little bit more than. Uh, the the typical cross track, et cetera. So, keep us when you when you decide to go to the mountains. Keep us uh, updated so we can uh, have a Saint Bernard on the ready for you. With yeah, a, exactly. a big drum of whiskey <laughs> around its neck. Yeah. So as we would say in the technology world, Jeff, this is very much a 1.0 release yeah, for Subaru would... in terms of EVs and and everything. And I got a couple yeah. comments on the Subaru page um, about the hybrids too, because uh, there's someone in the UK that reached out to me and told me that he's got uh, the eSport Forester hybrid over in the UK. And he said, he's kind of meh about that as well. So I don't know. I asked him for some more details, but I haven't heard anything back yet. But so hopefully yeah. we'll see if they, they expand the, the hybrid line in the US. Yeah, and I, I, the Forester's I think, coming up with that. But Right. I think I, I misspoke last time. I said that the EPA estimated mileage on the Crosstrek hybrid, which they're not selling anymore, was 100 miles. More like ninety, but still, it's, 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 still, that's it's pretty good. good. You could, yeah, you could. It's not bad. Definitely not, not bad. No, that would be good. Yeah. All right, Greg. Thanks so much for stepping back in with us. Really appreciate it. Uh, selling, is, is sharing your uh, your heartbreak with us, and uh, I'm, you know, who knows? Maybe in the next few months, you'll you'll figure out another way of uh, making this work. Either either by getting Subaru to let you get into a cross track, or figuring out, you know a better way of being able to handle that, the journey, you know, maybe there's some magic or science to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep you posted. All right. Thanks so much. All so right. this Thanks. is, uh, oh, is sorry, it? Tom, I'm interrupting no. you. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, once again, this feedback at basicafshow.com. You can get to us. Um, Love like, if you've subscribe. got an EV. Right. And if, if somebody out there has an EV for comparison, we'd like to hear about that too. Yeah, absolutely. We'd like to get you on actually. It would be kind of fun to have a conversation with, uh, with you. So if, if you're out there and you want to talk about uh, your EV experience and how it might differ from Greg's, uh, we're definitely interested. So yeah, that's, that's us in our first bonus episode. And thanks for being the bonus, Greg. Appreciate it. Pleasure. All right. Thanks, Greg. For those listening, have a great rest of your day, rest of your night, and we will talk to you next time. See ya. I don't want to know about your imperfections, dude, but for the